Uh, good evening, everybody. And uh, do I need the mic? I want the mic. Anybody need the mic for me? No? Uh, good evening, everybody, and thank you very much uh, for your attendance here this evening and for coming along. Uh, Cormac Devlin is my name. Uh, I'm a councillor in Dunleary uh, and a colleague of Justin Moylan who's running with me in the Dunleary area. We also have another host for this evening's meeting, that is uh, Michael Clark, who's a candidate for us in the Shack Hill area. And so uh, Michael and Justin are jointly hosting this evening's meeting. And we're also joined by our Fianna Fáil spokesman on housing, planning and local government, Dara Bryan TV. And Dara, you're very welcome to Dunleary. Uh, Dara has uh, a pressing engagement after this, and if you don't believe me, just turn on Virgin One after this evening, and you'll see it in the studio. Uh, I don't know what meetings will be hard after this one, or, uh, or, or, or the debate later on. We're also joined by uh, architect and renowned you know, commentator uh, on the housing issue, and that's Mel Reynolds. So Mel, you're very welcome this evening, and thank you very much for your attendance uh, here tonight. And to Bill Black as well from Okulon Housing. Um, and Okulon are very involved in the cooperative uh, housing sector, uh, amongst others, and so both uh, Mel and Bill are going to talk in a short while uh, about their various uh, views of the issues that are um, facing us. But as we all know, and the reason why we're all here this evening is because housing is such a pressing issue, not just here in Dunleary, not in Dara's area of Fingal, but right across Dublin and indeed Ireland. The pace uh, of units that have been developed have slowed over the years, uh, the volume that is required are not being met on a national level, uh, and so the problem for housing uh, is becoming more and more problematic for young people and for, uh, for couples uh, and individuals, be that buying their own property, renting in the private sector, or indeed those who are looking for uh, housing support from the local authorities. In this county of Dunleary, Rathdown, our housing list stands at approximately 4,500 uh, individuals. Uh, it's quite sizable uh, in comparison, comparatively to uh, other uh, local authority areas. Uh, and the largest list uh, in Dunmiri back down is indeed the one bed list. A lot of people would assume it's a two bed, maybe even a three bed list. Uh, but in actual fact, the highest uh, volume is the one bed list. So um, I'm not going to say too much more about the local context because uh, Deputy O'Brien is going to speak more about uh, looking at the context locally here in Dunleary Rath Down and comparing that with the kind of national figures. Uh, they are make stark reading, um, but as I say, we all are aware of that. I think every single family, every single home, every individual uh, has been touched by uh, the crisis that is housing uh, in Ireland. And the comparison that I give for quite frequently is this, that particularly on affordable housing, prior to the affordable uh, legislation being scrapped in 2012, <coughs> the affordable housing scheme worked in this country. There was no problem. People applied, if they met the criteria, if they applied through the local authority, invariably they were accepted and there were housing coming on street. But in the current day, we're all pointed towards rebuilding Ireland. Now, I don't know what, what uh, Dara might say about rebuilding Ireland, uh, but I assume it's along the same lines as myself, is that rebuilding Ireland has been this fallacy that has been peddled for many, many years on a national level, that actually rebuilding Ireland is working. When in actual fact, you look down locally, and indeed Michael and Justin will tell you, from the doors that we've counted, <coughs> the amount of people who've applied for rebuilding Ireland loans, they need all the criteria. On paper, they are ideal candidates, and they're either told one of two things, that they're not accepted or their application is still in the pipeline. And that means a delay. That means the house that they may have seen uh, is no longer the one that they can look to buy. Uh, or indeed, those people who are on the housing lists 10, 12, 13 or more years. Uh, and that's not just here in Dunleary back down, but again, as I say, it's across the country. So it's a very pressing issue. One of my own generation and that of my peers who found it exceptionally difficult uh, to either rent or buy in the current state of the economy. So we're all told that we're multimillionaires, we're all told the economy is flying ahead, and sure we can buy an island in Barbados and we'll all be fine. When in fact the simplest element, which is people trying to get a roof over their head, be it through the private or the public sector, is becoming uh, you know, more out of reach than ever. 
uh, and I think it's a very sad indictment on current state of play. And so, without further ado, I want to introduce and let Dara speak to you uh, about the issues, as I say, nationally and uh, with a glimpse here at Dunleary Rap Down. Following that, we're then going to have a contribution from <coughs> Reynolds, and then following from following Mel's contribution, Bill uh, Black from O'Cool is going to speak. And then we're going to hear from uh, both Michael and Justin uh, on their views of, of the current state of play. Uh, and then we're going to open the debate to the floor. Okay, so Dara Bryan, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Excuse me, everybody. Uh, small bit of a cold, and uh, I hope this uh, meeting is easier than the one I've got. I know I have not well enough at well enough at this stage. But look, I'm really delighted to be here uh, this evening with a graduate with Cormac, who's a long-standing colleague of mine and a very good friend as well. We actually sold her together to go to go in the insurance sector. I was in pensions up till about 2006, and then I got elected to the Dáil in 2007, and then everything went very wrong from there quickly. So uh, I went kind of from the frying pan and, and into the fire. And uh, well, Cormac's been a very very strong advocate. Uh, a serious note for, for housing, for affordable housing for work, working people. I mean, we're a very strong advocate here at a local level. And I hope in, there I'm like, I was going to mention you in a minute. So, <laughs> uh, but uh, he has, you know, I, I hope in, in short course that Paul Cormac will be able to, to join me as a colleague in the Dáil post the next general election, whenever that is. So look, I'm really happy to be here this evening with you, along with Justin and along with, with Michael, a very strong team we have here in the area of community activists of people who, are, who, are, who put their names forward for public service, to serve the public, to serve their communities, to try and fundamentally make our lives better here as communities and try to address the problems that we have. One of the single biggest one, and I'll talk about in a moment now, is in, in relation to housing. I have a short presentation, I don't propose to go through everything, but I just want to contextualise it and just to give you an idea that there are parties like ours, and I will be slightly partisan, I'm happy to take any questions or criticisms, Later on, indeed, no problem whatsoever. But we have plans. We have a plan in place that can address this housing crisis. I'm really delighted to be joined again by Mel. I've shared many a panel with Mel Reynolds, who, who has been a, an extremely, extremely sensible commentator in, in this regard. And has highlighted the deficiencies in, in government and previous governments, including our own strategy, in utilizing state homeland, the assets that we have already. And no, Mel, you're probably going to cover a fair bit of that. I will touch on that and Bill as well from O'Coolon Housing, who are probably the only cooperative out there who are delivering more affordable homes than the state has in the last nine years. Uh, I've had the pleasure of dealing with Bill and with, and with Hugh, particularly in relation to their flagship uh, project out, out in Ballymun. There, I believe that their model, which isn't a million miles away from ours, and I do have a leaflet that I prepared earlier for everyone to take away, away with you, to have a look and to see what the affordable model that, that we would bring, would, would bring forward. So I'm delighted to be here with O'Coolon and continue, hopefully, to work with them uh, in delivering solutions. Fundamentally, and I know we're going to fix this quite quickly, and I, I have to say, have to take questions, but just to, to put it in context. In context. Since, since coming into power, um, there's been loads of strategies uh, announced, and lots and lots and lots of strategies. And one of my biggest criticisms of all these strategy announcements is not that you don't need a plan, of course you do, but you don't need multiple plans. What you actually do, instead of announcements and re-announcements, you actually need to start delivering. Uh, and that's fundamentally my belief. Because as a country, by the way, and I would make a general point here, is as a country we built homes before. It's not as if we're trying to do something that we've never actually done before. In 1938, 1939, or the Hegarty, many of you will know, and Mel will know as well, looked at Dublin Corporation, uh, when we had no money uh, on the brink of the emergency, as we called it here, or World War II as it was, as it was elsewhere. Where in Dublin Corporation alone, there were only 4,000 homes built uh, in, in that year. And we've done it right the way through up to recent times. And I want to sort of dispel a number of myths that, that, are, that are put out there about when, when house building stops. So there's the number of plans that we've had. I would say one little bit of good news, and what seemed like good news, is that 150 local authority homes were built in Dunleary Rathdown in 2018. They're one of the better performing local authorities. The problem is, and I think Mel will probably go, go through this as well, they're not all built. A lot of them are actually purchased, turnkey purchases that are actually buying properties from out, uh, from under the nose of, of potential first time buyers. So on the one side we have real estate investment trusts, trust buying loads of stuff, state buying more on this side, and we're not building it up in the middle. So I'm happy that there's 150 families that have been housed and have come off our list. But Cormac has 
has, has gone through with you, the, the sheer scale of the numbers here, which I'll go into in, in a few more days. Look, I'm going to cover the rules of 